Each week, American Artifacts takes you to historic sites and museums. Up next, we travel to Silicon Valley to learn about the history of computers. This is one of a two-part look at the exhibit Revolution, the first 2,000 years of computing. A supercomputer has many definitions, but one of the easiest ones is it's just the most expensive computer there is out there. Uh, another one is it's the fastest computer out there. Either one of those, they're, they're almost equivalent. Um, one of the first computers to be called a supercomputer was actually in the 50s, a machine called Stretch, uh, or the IBM 7030. This was a gigantic machine that was sold to the NSA and the Department of Energy um, to do weapons design. And uh, since then, it's just come to stand for the, the best and the fastest and most expensive system you can get at any one time. You know, it's, would you rather have a tractor or would you rather tie 20 chickens together and pull a plow with that? So it's not like you can just get a bunch of PCs and connect them together and do these problems. A supercomputer is way off, uh, way off scale from that level of performance. For example, the Roadrunner, which was just retired, a computer built by IBM, a supercomputer, could perform, it was the first computer to hit the petaflop benchmark. That means in one second, it could calculate a thousand trillion calculations in one second. So, and that's not even the fastest computer in the world anymore. So these are the kinds of speeds you need when you're doing things like designing cars or uh, predicting the weather or solving cryptographic codes and enemy ciphers and codes and that kind of thing. And then a whole host of other things. For example, uh, the way that Pringles potato chips are, are uh, designed, that was designed on a supercomputer and it's designed to come off their assembly line really quickly without actually flying off the floor. And uh, that was one of the factors they had to take into account. So you, your lives are affected by supercomputing even if you don't see the direct connection. Um, the cars you drive, uh, for example, were probably designed on a supercomputer. The government is very much involved in supercomputing and in fact it's really the lead customer for the, for the, the bleeding edge systems, the systems that are, uh, cost a hundred million dollars or more. Um, really the government is the only institution that, that can afford to put out that kind of money. The Cray-1 is the first of Seymour Cray's computers which he built at his own company, Cray Research, in 1976. It took him four years to build this, but when he finished it was the fastest computer in the world. It cost about 10 million dollars, this is in 76, and you needed an existing mainframe computer system to sort of keep it fed with data. Um, it took a year to complete, it took six months to wire and six months to test, and there was over 60 miles of wiring inside the machine. It was all done by hand. Um, each connection at one at a time. Seymour Cray was a brilliant uh, engineer and mathematician who designed basically the fastest computers in the world for about 20, 25 years. He was fortunate in that he had the gigantic largesse of the US government and the Cold War, which provided him with the, the, the context for designing these gigantic machines which people would buy regardless of cost. So they were used for things like cryptography and bomb design, for example, both topics that are pretty squarely within the government's uh, realm of responsibility. And so a lot of Seymour Cray's customers were in fact government uh, customers, large national research laboratories, the NSA, uh, those kind of people. He came out with uh, less expensive models and most importantly, more software. Uh, it took a few years for people to write software for these machines. Uh, industry began picking this up quite a lot and um, across a whole bunch of different fields, uh, automobile crash testing, uh, drug design, uh, chemical modeling, uh, modeling refineries and uh, industrial processes. Those were all done on uh, supercomputers. When you absolutely need the, the power and money as no object, Seymour Cray's machines were what you, were, uh, what you went and got. And yet, uh, there was a study recently done that showed a Cray 2, which is the follow-on to this computer, which I can show you in just a moment, was about as powerful as an iPad 2. 
in terms of, of uh, computational power. That means that what cost $30 million in the 80s can now be bought for five or $600. You can view this and all American History TV programs at our website, cspan.org slash history.